Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum. Welcome to the channel. Uh, today's discussion is in continuation of granulomas of the nose and uh, paranasal sinuses. Today we will discuss the granulomas which are being left in uh, the group which is of unspecified etiology. So we will try to cover those granulomas today. The description for all bacterial fungal granulomas and Wagner's granuloma, which we discussed last time, is there in the description box. So you can check any relevant video for the relevant topic. So granulomatous diseases of the nose and paranasal sinuses, you are requested to like and share the channel and don't forget to subscribe it. So this is the basic scheme of uh, rhinitis which we are following and we are trying to cover this granulomatous rhinitis or granulomatous diseases affecting the nose and paranasal sinuses. The definition of granuloma we have repeated on all those previous videos that this is a granuloma. It is a focus of chronic inflammation consisting of a microscopic aggregation of macrophages that are transformed into epithelium like uh, cells and these are surrounded by the column of mononuclear leukocytes principally the lymphocytes and occasionally plasma cells then these are classified according to the etiology that is bacterial granulomas fungal granulomas and then the granulomas of unknown etiology and this is the third group which we will focus on this Wagner's granuloma we already uh, discussed in a video the link is there in the description box and these two main groups are also being discussed and uploaded videos on my channel already present there so today we will talk about non-healing midline granuloma this is also called as Stewart's granuloma synonymously known as midline lethal granuloma some people call it as polymorphic reticulosis and sinonasal lymphoma because actually this is its picture is just like a lymphoma or it is also known as tnk cell lymphoma so these are different names which are synonymously used this is a slowly destructive disease of the nose and mid facial region and it is differentiated from the wagner's granuloma by absence of pulmonary and renal involvement. So it means that this T cell lymphoma or midline uh, lethal granuloma, it will involve only the nose and paranasal sinuses. It is not involving the lower respiratory or the kidneys. While in Wagner's granuloma, we have discussed that that is a multi-systemic disease and uh, it involves uh, upper airway, lower airway and generalized vasculitis is there leading to glomerulonephritis. So that is the differentiating feature between on history and clinical examination between Wagner's granuloma and this T-cell lymphoma. Uh, clinically, there will be unilateral lesions in the nose which may extend to the soft tissues of the nose, upper lip, oral cavity, maxillary sinus and the orbit. So it is a localized disease. Lesions are explosive and rapidly progressive and secondary infection of the lesions by gram negative and anaerobe organisms. This is how it can present with. So biopsy will show mixed population of cells that is mature lymphocytes, plasma cells and large lymphoreticular cells which resembles the picture of lymphoma. So that's why it is called as T cell lymphoma. Immunohistochemical studies by using the antibodies and Epstein Barr virus RNA is detected by in situ hybridization. Its treatment is radiotherapy, followed by, of course, the surgical debridement of all those necrosed tissues, and later on, plastic surgery or a nasal prosthesis can be used once the disease is under control. So to sum up between Wagner's granuloma and this Stewart's granuloma that Wagner's granuloma will involve 
upper and lower airway along with kidneys so clinical features will also be like that cnk is there you know diagnostic for wegner's granuloma and bobsy will confirm the diagnosis for this uh, Stewart's granuloma and Wagner's granuloma as well. The treatment for Wagner's granuloma is uh, conservative. Uh, that is, um, uh, this uh, uh, drugs, cytotoxic drugs will be used for the treatment of Wagner's granuloma. While in case of lymphoma here, radiotherapy will be used. And surgery is for only for those devitalized and necrosed tissues removal and later on plastic surgery for whatever the damage would have been done by these devastating diseases. Then is sarcoidosis. It is also called as Boix sarcoid. It is chronic systemic disease of unknown etiology which may involve any organ with non-caseating. That is, so when it is non-caseating, so these will be hard granulomatous inflammation. So this non-caseating uh, granulomatous lesions will differentiate it from tuberculosis. Otherwise, it will resemble that tuberculosis. But in tuberculosis, we know there will be caseating nodules, a caseating type of granulomas. While here, it will be non-caseating. There, we know that mycobacterium tuberculosis causes the infection. While here, unidentified organism will, is causing this sarcoidosis. There will be nasal discharge, nasal obstruction, nasal bleeding. Mucosa will reveal yellow nodules surrounded by hyperemic mucosa on anterior septum and the turbinates. And the skin will show lupus perneum. That is nasal tip will show symmetrical bulbous glistening violaceous lesions as you can see here in this picture. So this is lupus perneum and this is the diagrammatic representation of this lupus perneum. So sarcoidosis, unknown etiology, just to sum up, it involves lungs, lymph nodes, eyes and the skin. In the nose, submucosal nodules, nasal pain and nasal obstruction with nasal bleeding. Diffuse pulmonary infiltration with the hyalur lymphadenopathy on X-ray and CT scan and flexible bronchoscopy can be done. Angiotensin converting enzyme test is used to help and diagnose sarcoidosis, monitor the disease activity and monitor the response to the treatment. Serum urinary calcium level will be raised. So we have to ask for CBC, renal function tests and liver function tests and treatment is systemic and local steroid. So prednisolone, chloroquine methotrexate plus prednisolone in patients which are not responding to the steroids and cutaneous lesions may need to be excised and that defect is to be grafted by the skin. Churg Strauss syndrome. It is allergic angitis and granulomatosis. Very uncommon. Uh, in 1 million, there may be 1 to 3 cases. It is described by Churg and Strauss in 1951. It is characterized by asthma, peripheral and tissue eosinophilia, extravascular granuloma formation and vasculitis of multiple organ systems. It is also called as eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis, EGPA. So it is a disorder which is marked by blood vessel inflammation and this inflammation can restrict the blood flow to the organs and the tissues, sometimes permanently causing the damage to these vital organs. And asthma is the most common sign of churg strauss syndrome. Individuals with churg strauss syndrome, they often develop non-specific symptoms that may be associated with various illnesses, 
including fatigue, fever, weight loss, night sweats, abdominal pain, cough, arthralgia, myalgia, and a general feeling of ill health that is malaise. So these all these are non-specific symptoms. EGP is traditionally treated with high doses steroids such as prednisolone to reduce the inflammation. For more severe cases, prednisolone is used in combination of the drugs that suppress the immune system's response such as methotrexate, azathioprine, mycophenolate mofetil or cytotoxic agents like cyclophosphamide can also be used. Prognosis with the treatment at one year the survival rate is more than 90% while at five years the survival rate is 62% morbidity is proportional to illness in a population and mortality is incidence of death in a population. Myocarditis and myocardial infarction secondary to coronary arteritis and other causes of death may be renal failure. Thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe the channel.